Hey there, it's Timmy Joe making videos, things and stuff, computers on the internet. Apparently it's a holiday, or it is at least in the States. I'm from Canada, so we had our thing last week. We call it May 2-4. May 2-4 was last weekend, but uh, I barely know what day it is at all anymore, so what does it matter? But uh, for all of you guys out there having a long weekend, hope you're having a good, a good one, considering you're probably not doing too much. Anyways. We got rumors to talk about. I haven't done this kind of video in a while, uh, and I will be moving out of here. I'm gonna, big changes coming in June. So uh, let me know if you want to see more rumor mill, uh, you know, grains of salt, uh, pound in the salt, snort in the salt, whatever you do with the salt. Uh, you let me know if you want to see me talk about stuff like this. More often, I used to do it all the time. It's generally pretty good uh, for view counts and stuff like that, but uh, you know, there are better people that do it out there, but maybe you want to hear my opinion too. So uh, what we're gonna talk about today, well, do you think, do you think maybe AMD and Big Navi, Navi 21, RDNA 2 has what it takes to not only beat the 2080 Ti, no, that's, that's old news, to beat what NVIDIA will inevitably be coming out with this year as well in Ampere? We're going to discuss today why I think AMD has no goddamn chance, especially considering, I mean, Fury... No, no, no. How many how many generations have they not been on top? I don't know anymore. Cue an intro or do something. We'll 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 discuss it. <gasps> he makes videos about computers on the internet. On the internet. Timmy Joe PC Tech. PC Tech. Tech reviews. Computer parts. You betcha. <laughs> ah, yeah. All right, so uh, I want to give a shout out to Boot Sequence. Uh, he's like the guy I watch for this kind of news, and he's way better than like a lot of the other guys out there uh, in the way they really like make it all about like crazy rumors and glory. WCS <coughs> uh, yeah, but uh, if you want to check out some tech news, there's the obvious people, or uh, I really suggest Snows at Boot Sequence. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description because I got a lot of the information from one of his videos, and it made me want to make my own video. So. Navi 21, big Navi. We were hoping that this would happen by now. Would have been nice because they could have, you know, competed with uh, Turing. Would have been a little bit easier considering the uh, process node there. And, you know, AMD being on 7 nanometer and the current lineup from NVIDIA being on 12. But it looks like big Navi is going to come in RDNA 2 either at the end of the year or who knows what's going to happen because uh, all the parts are from China and uh, you know things are being real real slowly shipped over here. I'm still waiting for my 10900K and it's been a week and I pre-ordered it a week before that so I've had $800 floating out there in the ether no CPU to show. So will these cards release by the end of the year? I have no earthly idea but I would imagine we will see something year end or early 2021 along these lines let's start with amd so there is a leaker by the name of row game who uh went through the pc ids and found all this information and was able to you know do the big navi or rdna2 and kind of place it along with uh you know where the stacks are for their products now and he figured out some pretty interesting information but the main takeaway here i'm not going to be talking too much about you know, there's supposed to be like a whole bunch of cards in the stack and, you know, there's like maybe four of them uh, in the top end and then a refresh of RDNA 1 for the lower end. I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. I'm worried about like the performance crown. AMD has been looking for this for a while. Radeon Division's been hoping for this for a long time. They really haven't been on top in a very, very long time. And I would really not want to see another Fury... Vega, Radeon 7 situation here, but things have been looking up. I mean, RDNA is pretty good for a lot of reasons. Yeah, launch was a little iffy, definitely had a lot of issues at launch, but there's something to be said about working the kinks out in the you know mainstream line of GPUs so that when it comes time to release your big one, everything's already fixed up. You've got it all figured out. You got your TSMC making even a better seven nanometer process. You've got your drivers and all that's not gonna be a huge process change. So it should be pretty easy to release a really good card here without a lot of launch problems, assuming there's like stock and stuff like that. So what they're saying 
is you take RDNA 1 5700 XT and you effectively double it. You effectively double it. You take that 251 millimeter, 7 nanometer die with 40 compute units and you make it twice as big and cram twice as many compute units. That's 80 compute units. That's five or 5,120 stream processors all on one die. And then that'll make you think like, there's AMD doing it again. It's going to be some giant die like Vega. It's going to be impossible to cool. Well, not necessarily because the die is so small. The uh, process is so efficient that even if you double it, It'll only make the die size 505 millimeters when the 2080 Ti's die size is well over 700 millimeters. So it still would be a pretty small, easier to cool chip. And assuming they have TSMC's, you know, it's not going to be like seven nanometer plus. There's no die shrink or anything, but they're saying they got some efficiency. That makes sense. They've been, you know, playing around making this for a year. They probably got some ways to make this more efficient. They say they should be able to gain a lot of efficiency out of this, therefore making it so you don't really double the TDP of the 5700 XT, which is still 225 watts. It's still a pretty, you know, higher power sucking card. But that would lead me to believe that their higher end card would be at least 300 watts TDP. Uh, and you might say, well, why don't, you know, maybe they'll have a little room to make that less than that. And, you know, it won't be quite double the performance. Well, I believe AMD is going to need exactly double the performance to even compete closely with NVIDIA, uh, you know, not be, you know, miles off here because there is a lot of NVIDIA news here as well. So we're talking doubling the performance of the 5700 XT. That sounds pretty good. And in fact, that would beat the 2080 Ti, but no, Ampere is coming and it's going to bring their 12 nanometer process down to TSMC's seven nanometer process, putting them on the same playing ground that way. And then they're supposed to up the CUDA cores on this, let's say 3080 Ti from the 2080 Ti and bring the CUDA cores up to 5,376, making it so that this new Ampere card this 3080 Ti should have more stream process or more processing cores than AMD's. So it's already got an advantage there and they're gonna be on the same manufacturing process. Plus, <laughs> NVIDIA's pretty good even when they're on a level playing field at being more efficient and being better. They're typically you know, pretty far ahead here. But AMD does have the advantage of already being on seven nanometers. So NVIDIA will definitely with this process have some growing pains. They'll have some stuff to work out. There'll be some efficiency losses there, but because they're going from 12 nanometer down to seven, they'll have a lot of efficiency, especially with having more process extra uh, CUDA cores than the stream processors that's gonna be on this. 6700 XTX or whatever the hell it's gonna be. It seems like NVIDIA is going to have the upper hand. And this is where I'll bring in the numbers. So if we're effectively doubling the speed of the 5700 XT, which I am very familiar with, that would make it a pretty fast card. But if we're talking time spy graphics score performance, I know what that is. The best you could do with the 5700 XT is in and around 10,000 points in the graphics score of time spy. If we contrast that to the 2080 Ti, it gets about 15,000. So it's about 50% faster already than the 5700 XT. But apparently, they're going to be getting the 3080 Ti about 50% faster than the 2080 Ti. So if we take the numbers, if we crunch the numbers, they're gonna effectively double the speed of the 5700 XT, and they're gonna get 1.5 times the speed out of the 2080 Ti. And when you crunch those numbers, it pretty much seems like in time spy graphics score, just to give you like, you know, some numbers to wrap your head around, this new 6700 XTX or whatever the hell it's gonna be with 80 compute units is going to be able to get close to 20,000 points on the graphics score, making it quite a bit faster than the 2080 Ti. But if this Ampere news is, uh, you know, is to be believed that it's going to be 50% faster than the 2080 Ti, that's going to put this 3080 Ti somewhere in the neighborhood of like 22,500 points 
in a Time Spy graphics score. Therefore, it's gonna be faster, you know? And, and because Nvidia has a little bit more efficiency to play with there because they're shrinking their node, I think they're gonna be able to comfortably fit their TDP under like 250 watts and uh, you know be able to be a little bit more efficient while having more CUDA cores or you know stream processors and having a clock speed advantage probably even though both cards have been breaking the two gigahertz barrier but I would imagine there there's going to be a clock speed increase with this Nvidia I would imagine it's going to be faster than two gigahertz maybe in the area of an advertised boost speed of like 2200 megahertz or something like that for some of the overclock models where we're not going to see a clock speed increase on the AMD side. There's just no way. So to put this all into context, I believe the best AMD, the best Radeon technologies can do here is maybe hit within a 10%, you know, uh, performance delta between this new 6700 XT and the 3080 Ti, which sounds like a Debbie Downer, doesn't it? Until you think about, NVIDIA is always expensive. NVIDIA is shrinking their process. They're actually kind of changing the way they do things with this process. It's going to be a new architecture. But AMD already has RDNA 1 under their belts. They should be able to make this a smooth launch. They, sh they should. Even though a lot of people are looking for TSMC's 7 nanometer process right now. So whether or not availability and whatnot is going to happen, I don't know. But let's say they land between you know 10% delta here. It's still a very, very powerful card. It's still much faster than the 2080 Ti. So if they can do what they did with Ryzen versus Intel... I've been looking for this for a long time from AMD. Don't worry about being the fastest. Don't, you know, maybe even make your card a little more efficient and don't push it to its bleeding edge like you did with like the Fury versus the 980 Ti launch. Put a water cooler on it or something stupid. Make a really good card that is much faster than the previous generation's Nvidia card, the 2080 Ti, but it's more efficient and it actually is less expensive because what's the biggest problem with nvidia right now 2080 ti for americans fourteen hundred dollars like because of the climate but you know it, it was over twelve hundred dollars for a decent one no matter what you were doing in the states like it, it'd be pretty hard to get a 2080 ti for much less than twelve hundred dollars new so if you can take that 2080 ti's performance and sell it for like seven hundred dollars and it's faster that would be amazing. That would be Ryzen versus Intel. That would be, it's not the fastest for gaming. It would be like the 3700X versus the 9900K. You can make every argument in the world that the 9900K is faster, but that 3700X is so much cheaper and so close that it is the better buy. And that's the only way AMD will win this fight is if it will le they legitimately release a really decent graphics card that's this close, but this time it doesn't catch on fire because it's so inefficient and it's priced right. And that's where AMD can win the crown. But if you were hoping for AMD to win the performance crown and not just the best, you know, the best bang for your buck crown, who, where do these crowns come from that I'm always talking about? Anyways, if you want them to win the all out performance championship, there's no way they'll do it. They're going to be close, closer than they've ever been. But I believe there'll be that 10% that NVIDIA can comfortably, you know, say we're the best. And the only way AMD will win this is if they can get that 2080 Ti plus performance for well under $1,000. Maybe it's possible. Maybe. It's going to be hard. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I want to thank Rogue Game for this information on whatever. There's some Ampere rumors as well. But I get a lot of the information from Snow's on Boot Sequence. And uh, you know what? He made me want to do this video, this talking, because I was checking out some of the information he was sharing. He's a really good guy for news on YouTube, so uh, check out Snow's boot sequence on his channel. A lot better than some of the other Rumorel guys, but uh, you know what? Have a fun Memorial Day, and we'll cross our fingers that we might even see any of these cards by the end of the year, because the way things are going, I don't know about that. But I think we'll deserve a good round of graphics cards once this 
whole situation dies down a bit. Maybe we can get our game on. So I'm at Watch Jimmy Joe Instagram and Twitter. I appreciate your time. Hit the subscribe button. We got big changes coming in June, so hang in there. And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think that uh, Big Navi's going to be the all-out performance winner, but it has the ability to be as good as Ryzen if they play their cards right. Let's hope. See you guys in another video.